Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Um, we'd like to welcome the Gallery of Photography Ireland. Um, before I start, I'd just like to thank you for coming and thank you to our online audience. Um, we would like to acknowledge um, our funders, the Arts Council and the City Council, who support what we do here. And for this particular project, we'd like to thank the Department of Tourism, Sport, Tourism Culture, Arts, Sport, Theatre and Media. Um, and in particular the North-South Cooperation Scheme who funded this particular North-South collaboration so they, they funded the invited section of, of this programme. And I would like to hand you over to Paul Garrity. Paul is one of the lead curators on this New Frontier project and Paul will introduce the artist. So thanks for coming. Right. So this might feel like Groundhog Day for some of the people in the room, so I apologise in advance to, to, to all of you. Uh, I'm just going to quickly introduce the project. Uh, so Galleries Without Walls was uh, basically our experimental programme to help the gallery develop its digital first approach uh, and also our first foray into, into helping and understanding artists in this brave new world of, uh, of NFTs. Uh, I actually have to thank a couple of people too. Uh, not only were we funded by the state to make, to use crypto, to buy crypto and make crypto art, we were actually, we didn't, we didn't use any state money for that. In fact, we were funded by an organization called uh, the Foundation for Art and Blockchain, who were very, very uh, good and provided us money to actually, crypto money, to make some of the art here. Uh, and we were also helped by the uh, Museum of Crypto Art, which is MOCA, who provided invaluable technical help. And also the, uh, the NFT minting platform foundation uh, on which we, we minted the, the stuff. We can, we can talk about that in questions, I think. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to, to the artists here. And uh, I'm just going to do a round robin very, very quickly. Uh, so, Ruth, would you like to introduce yourself very quickly? So, Ruth Pazalba is a uh, photographic artist, and the work that I've um, brought in myself revisited is a piece of work called Orbises and Angels that I would have made in 2014 um, from Northern Ireland. Delighted to be involved in this project. So, I'll just introduce you to Mark. Uh, I'm Mark Duffy, um, uh, again a lens-based uh, artist. Uh, the work that I've kind of um, translated into NFT, I suppose, is a series called On Pugin, which is a, a, a close look, macro look at the carpets of the House of Commons of the, the dirt and ephemera and the, the frame of, of the institution. And I'd like to introduce you to Una. Hi, my name is Una Keane. I'm a composer. Uh, from Dublin and I was absolutely thrilled to be involved in the project working with Ruth and um, yeah it was amazing cutting edge really enjoyed it. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Boren artist from Dublin um, primarily photography lens based film video but I, I kind of increasingly I just see it as well it's kind of all digital so Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. I'm not the artist here. I'm uh, uh, I'm the chairperson of Blockchain Ireland um, Startups Group. Um, I'm an advisor on an NFT recycling platform called Plastics.io, which is from the UK and Spain. When we publish NFTs um, alongside visual practice, emerging visual practice, so that's kind of under the hood at the moment. Um, but I'm really interested to see and hear from all of the visual artists here about bringing their current practice into that digital realm. And if NFTs have a function around archive, maybe, or revisiting, or in, in enterprise setting with technology, we talk about the digitalization process or digital transformation. And it's really interesting to see what's happening here and the, with, with blockchain and NFTs, you get direct access to the market. I'm, I'm just delighted so Fiona's here because she'll be able to answer any technical <laughs> 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 Letting you off the hook. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm really yeah. interested to hear the rest uh, of And uh, Kieran. So <coughs> Kieran Dunbar, I'm a photographer, and uh, the work I use is Diesel, which is basically a study or a look at 
the illegal industry of diesel laundering along the border and the toxic waste that they, that they dump um, along, the, along the border. So one of the things I didn't say at the outset is um, the work that you're seeing here was a cl collaboration. So what we did is we invited as part of the program um, five visual artists uh, and five composers to collaborate. Uh, so we put out an open call for, and three of, two of the artists here were, were selected by yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Mark and Michael and uh, Ruth and Kieran were invited to participate. Uh, so our partner uh, in the program was the RCC Letter Kenny and Jeremy unfortunately can't be here. Uh, he's a bit of a sound legend, so he's a composer himself. So he, it was really brilliant for the gallery to actually collaborate with an ex to get that expertise from, from, from Jeremy. So he helped us pair the composers and, and the artists together, which, uh, which we, we just couldn't, we couldn't have done alone in the, in the gallery at all. Um, so what I'd like to do is, I think you have a question <laughs> for the artists. You were, you, when you started here, you, you actually, you, I just thought this is great, Fiona's. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, I don't, probably don't just have one. Um, what is different now after this project, having engaged with this encapsulated context, like an NFT in software terms is sort of an encapsulation of practice. So what for you is different about the way you think about either your practice in relation to NFTs or about how you might even approach something like exhibiting with the Gallery of Photography? Has something shifted or changed, or is it more of the same? I think Una, would, or Una and Ruth could probably take that. Yeah, yeah I think. <laughs> in short, yes, it definitely has. It's, really good. it's a really, really good question, because I think all this, well, I'll speak for myself, but we had an initial, um, there were 10, like five composers, five um, visual artists. Nina was uh, yeah. based in France. She can't be here, unfortunately, but she, she came to Donegal and we, we'd all worked um, over Zoom for two full uh, six yeah. hour days. It was, some, it was something about the, this is only the second time that we've met. Yeah. So, so uh, the entire project was, was, was uh, like when we used interesting techniques, like we used a design sprint to bring the artists up to speed. Yeah. So we had a, a four, was it two or four day? Two. 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 And they hated it. They absolutely hated it. <laughs> 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 Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. but no, it, it was just, they, they thought it was, uh, well, you had to turn for it. Uh, I didn't like design sprint. <laughs> I don't like talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we got, it was very, it was the only way we could get the artists and uh, really, and all of us up to speed with the technology and we found it to be very helpful. So, yeah, I do say, I would say though, it, we did have to be immersed in it yeah. uh, to get a sense of the parameters and deal with each other, you know, I think there was no other way. Yeah, it was, it was in the deep end for sure and I think um, all of us were coming from different experiences and different, well, like some different backgrounds. And uh, personally, I have a background in software engineering, like my undergrad, and actually specifically in um, internet security, but back like 20 years ago. So it was kind of fascinating to me, this idea of crypto cryptography in relation to art. Um, and I'm way out of practice in software now, but uh, it just piqued my interest. But in terms of where, what is now, uh, coming back to your question, uh, I know for me anyway, at the very beginning, we all of us were looking at each other saying, what the hell is this? Like, what is it? How do you, you can, like, how do you equate your work? It's all, like, you'd have a, an idea written down, but how do you actually convert with your own viewpoint and your own work? And collaboration is one thing, and then it's the art, for the technology and how it would actually feel. So I was just talking to Mark earlier actually about this, this idea of growth. So growth in general, I find, is can be uncomfortable. It shouldn't be painful, sometimes it is. But in terms of an artist, it can be a bit uncomfortable. I know a lot of us felt a bit like, what is this? And, and yet as we move through the various stages, and Paul and Jeremy were brilliant at, le at guiding us through that. It was, it's, you especially, you were really, you had the, there was a bit of a like, 
there was a step-by-step -step process, and as we passed through those, as we all grew, we realised, yes, it is relevant. This is, this is amazing, actually. And I think our confidence built, so I know, I, I don't well, go on you, and on you, about you, it. I you, love it now. You were, for, you were forced to uh, yeah. actually to address it and to actually, you know, you, you, there was nowhere to hide in the process. There was nowhere to hide. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, none of you hid, which is amazing, because you all stood up, and we, we, we didn't lose anyone. Sorry, Ruth. No, I suppose I was in terms of ask, answering your question, like what has changed. Like for me, it gave me the, the opportunity to kind of really look at the work again that I had kind of created, which was about kind of looking at, at traditional Christian worship and looking at, at, at women, female form. Um, so it, it allowed me to kind of re-engage with aspects of in the work, but kind of thinking through it in terms of rather than still the image or a kind of fixed series of images, which is kind of maybe how I'd kind of seen it. Thinking again, like when I entered this, I was kind of thinking about the book and the book that I hadn't made and all of that. Um, so it allowed me to kind of look at other ideas like around individualism, kind of um, the kind of commonality themes and sort of other kind of collective themes that were there in in the work, but to try and just amplify them yeah. a little bit. So it really, like I really got a lot out of it in terms of that. And certainly if I was to do like a, a kind of installation, I'd be very different from how I would have imagined really? it before as a result of the process. Really? Very definitely, yeah. So can I ask an add-on question then? Mm -hmm. If you were going to exhibit in this room now, would your go-to be to the images or would it be interaction? And, and what would it have been before? Um, I don't want to give it all away. Yeah. Well, fair enough. No, 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 no. <laughs> you want to but preserve the history, yeah. that's okay. It would be, a, it would be a, more of a dynamic in it, um, the, the kind of coming through from the NFT, like I'd be bringing something of that through into the into a gallery space. Not not as an F, showing it as an NFT, but kind of using some of the, the kind of just movement in life, I think, that kind of is brought to it by, by the sound, but also just by thinking about it in terms of moving image and the screen, and just, it, it has made me think differently about how to the, see the work. The one thing I noticed about your work, because your, your work is, all photographers' work is pre preoccupied with light. It, it really is. And I could see that you started thinking about, well, how can I move light around mm -hmm. these still images, which I thought was very... For me, yeah, it's quite it's kind interesting. Of mapping some light kind of around in, in a kind of installation or something like that, yeah. like, and, and showing the work. And Think about life science stuff, but also I suppose the, the second NFT in terms of bringing the bringing the kind of it kind of just playing with things around yeah. congregational and kind of angelic conferences and stuff. There's just other themes that kind of start to kind of come out of the work for me. That's so interesting because it's almost like you're engineering performance, but as interaction design. So. Nowadays, when we're thinking about e-commerce and that digital interface, everybody, web developers, are all about interaction design, what happens when, the sequence of things. And because you've had that experience with the design sprint and understanding that there is a moment where a member of the audience digitally encounters your work, and it's like an entry point, and you're designing interaction. I, I think you would great comments on this, because well, well, the one thing that only like we possibly should have known this at the outset, but once you mint an NFT, it's on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you know how to read the blockchain, anyone can actually show the work because yeah. it's on inter interplanetary cloud storage. So one of the things we did, we, when, when you, there, I'll, will I talk briefly about minting and what that means? Because I'm, yeah. uh, okay. So, uh, so basically what you, so, what, when they talk about an N NFT, an NFT literally stands for a non-fungible -fung token. And the difference between a non-fungible token and a, a fungible token is that a non-fungible token is unique. Right? So if you think about a euro, um, every euro is the same. Right? So when people think about a Bitcoin, every Bitcoin is the same. The only difference is you can actually, uh, when it's written on the blockchain, you can see what's called a chain of custody. It's still the same thing. One is the exact same as the other. With a non-fungible token, it's different. So there's something unique. It's a unique identifier that says this is different to that. And it gets written on the blockchain. And that's, that's really interesting. So it means that when digital artists and people who create stuff in the digital space have been largely, whether you're working in sound, illustration, 3D, any, any of those mediums, your, your work is pilferable. 
right? Because a digital copy is as good as the, the original every time. And in this, you've got some uniqueness. So as an artist, you can create a piece of something that is unique and you can create providence, which means you can create, it becomes collectible again. And that hasn't existed in the world for 40 years. Yeah. So this, this, is, this is why it's really interesting and this is why artists are taking note of this. Um, it's nascent, and what I mean by that is it's still being played out. We don't know where it will land, we don't know where it will go, we don't even know if it's a real thing, right? It, I, some days I wake up and I go, this is a Ponzi scheme. Some days I wake up and I go, this is the best thing since sliced yeah. bread. This but is the future. It's not really undertaken as a commercial enterprise, this is an artistic experiment. But, yeah, very much so. but, but yeah. I, 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 will, I will say that, absolutely. So we're, as the gallery isn't profiting from this in, in, in any way, uh, thank you. <laughs> sure. uh, and we've been a pains. Well, uh, we've been a pains to distance ourselves. I think at one stage we were told, and uh, I had my interest in it was um, that I've been involved in photography for a long time. I have loads of digital files, <laughs> and at a certain point, well, I would print photographs. Uh, uh, I sort of see that there has to be some other way of showing this work because also, you know, people talk about the green agenda. If we all printed all our photos, <laughs> there's a lot of ink and a lot of paper. And somewhere in that, when I look at platforms like Instagram, uh, which is really the one, but all of them, Everyone, at first when I came across Instagram, I thought everyone's just giving away their work free. It's a private company. Their terms and conditions, when you read into them, are quite shocking. <laughs> and uh, it's just gained in popularity because it is the center of the space. And what I liked initially with the NFT system, it's not just about money, it's about claiming ownership and that the thing has, uh, it's a respect for ownership, which is how the physical art market works. And uh, I think there is an important thing, money plays an important role, <laughs> not just for, you know, I'd like more money, because that's a given, we all would, but the, the, the sifting through of quality requires second collectors and secondary collectors all to have an ability to make money. And the sifting through of all that work is how we get the best. So it's a, like it's a cultural process. <laughs> and it so I like the fact that there's, there's a seriousness about the NFT could be a Ponzi scheme, <laughs> long term. But even the fact that it is, um, if I were to compare it to Instagram, mm -hmm. I go, no question, it's better to be treated as well, an artist it, on, it, on foundation. Yeah, it, even though it costs money to get into it, but still. It, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the things that you, you, well, people forget, actually, that um, do, when people used to take photographs, they used to print them. And to print a photograph cost money and it took time. Mm. And I suppose when you have to curate your work and to actually s spend money to turn it into an NFT, you're self cur curating. I have, I must have 30, 40,000 photographs. Mm. And most of them are rubbish. Right? Yeah. Because I take a photograph to, note, to make a note of something. That's the way, the way mm. lots of us do. So we all have thousands, hundreds of thousands of photographs mm. now. And how do they get curated? And we curate, curate them when we want to print them. Yeah. Often, right? And for what you say is actually true. There, there needs to be, a, it provides a mechanic where you might self curate your work and actually mint an NFT and say that's permanent. I'd interrupt yeah. there a little bit to say though, because mm. I think there's, because of like the, the fundamental nature of, of what these NFT things are, like commodity and artificial scarcity is at the basis of it all. And I think if you're curating your work with that in mind, 
you're, you're, you'd be curating your work in a very different way to, you, I won't say curating, but editing your work in a very different way to if you were, say, putting it in book form. You know, so you're only maybe, you're only maybe translating work into NFT or minting if, if it has a potential commercial value, or like a, a commercially interesting. But, but like, I don't know, I think, if potentially... Do you, could you not see that, like a hybrid form where, I, like I, I could actually see that you'd make a piece of art and you would, it's, it's almost like saying, well, this is the real thing. Mm. Uh, you know, the, it, like when you buy a print, mm. an artist would give you a certificate and say, well, that, that, that's like one of five or yeah. one, of, one of whatever, right, normally. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you take that at face value and, and that, that's the way it goes. Mm. But with, with this, it's like a, it's, it's that chain of custody, which is interesting. Mm, but at the end of the day, but it is about it is all about commodity, right? It is all about. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like there's something like intrinsically like slightly uncomfortable uh, for me in it, in that it is just at the at the end of the day, it is about money. That's like purely well, what. It's about valorization. Format. Pardon me. It's valorization because there are many many NFTs that don't get. Oh, well, absolutely, and that's that's important to talk about too, right? Everyone's well, seduced by the people. So and it may or may you know. not be about quality, because yeah. we are at a phase, certainly, in the NFT marketplace where the quality of the image itself, like some of the most popular NFTs are not what we would call high, you know, there's a lot of uh, pixelization or, you know, mm. like they are not meant to be high quality. And there is, I mean, I, I know, I follow people on Twitter who say, uh, photography is not art. Can mm. you make an mm. NFT from a photograph? Yeah, I mean, who's sure. going to curate the internet, right? I mean, well, somebody bloody should. Yeah. But <laughs> but <laughs> by the way, <laughs> Mishka Hanna does an excellent job curating the internet. Yeah. Who does? Mishka Hanna. So Mishka Hanna curates uh, Google Earth, and he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's he is a photographic artist. Yeah. Or he would be considered to be, and he's he's, a, he's it's incredibly amazing to yeah. see his work. Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah. this idea of curation. Is, is a thing that's with us, like there, there's a... Um but don't you think it's always been there? I mean, what does the gallery of photography do? If not yeah, it's always there. Right? Yeah, it's always there. But is this a digitalization of that process? It's not a one-to-one. -one. But you see, this is, this is interesting, because when you digitalize anything, you're not... These are just tools we use, and they're just labels. So at the end of the day, you have a human being who wants to create a piece of work and creates a piece of work that connects with someone. Yeah. Now it can be, we're always confused by art, right? Uh, the, like dadaism, dadaism was considered to be a practical joke until now it's considered to be actually quite instrumental in the way that we think about 20, 20th century art, mm -hmm. right? So these things are, these, this, is, this is emergent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We don't know wh where it'll land, but there is some interesting technical aspects of it that sort of appeal to me because I'm a bit of a geek. Um, and there's complexity around commerce, which also I'm quite interested in because I'm, I'm worried about, about money that like most of us are, right? So there's, you know, it, it is interesting and it, it, it needs to, it, it should be explored further. I'm reminded, right, if I can throw this one in, I remember um, uh, talking to someone who had gone to an art fair, this is like, the 1980s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, and uh, I'd met a Japanese video art collector, and we were both sitting around going, yeah, they buy DVDs, <laughs> it seems mad, you know, <laughs> like DVDs for 100,000 euro, for a dollar, you know, big money DVDs, but this guy had worked in the industry, and he was collecting video art, and it just seemed, it seemed like, it, this is the equivalent to that. It basically, it's buying digital files. And what collectors want is they want to be associated with things that are culturally significant so that they can donate them to a museum in their name. That's what they want. And they want to, of course, and they want to buy and sell so that their things go up in value, and I mean that's how the system works. Can you, can you, <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not for it or against I, it. But I, I just recognise. I, I, I just want to make, I make a, a point. I suppose is that right now we're at the beginning of this. So, yeah. so I, yesterday I met Sean Sexton. If any of you know Sean Sexton, he's he's the greatest. 
collector of Irish photography, and there's a wonderful exhibition down in Dublin Castle in the Prince Works, getting the plug in. Uh, and Sean, Sean has donated. How much, uh, Trisha? Half the work in there is from oh, Sean's yeah, collection. Yeah, like he's got a huge. He's one of the best known uh, most highly regarded collectors internationally, and he's got the best collection of photographs uh, on Ireland. So I, I spoke to him very briefly about it yesterday because I, I just wanted to get a soundbite from him. And I said, Sean, how long have you been doing this? And he said, well, I started doing it in the 80s and I would just walk in and no one wanted it and I would just take it. And I thought it was, it was important that these stories, that this, this record of, of vernacular Irish photography was, someone would find it interesting. And then he found vernacular photography interesting in, in, in many places and he, all, he had a line in it. So people would ring him and say, we've got this collection, would you like to buy them? And then he'd trade. So he would, he would, he would buy like a, you know, he would be able to trade an Irish, like with someone who had an Irish collection for maybe something that was from Southeast Asia, and he'd, he'd do those kind of swaps. So it's just interesting because now, yeah, yeah. now those, those photographs are, are incredibly valuable. But yeah. when he started in 83, they, were, they but, weren't. But in a way, they, they are valuable, like a lot of things are valuable, but it's not doesn't mean you necessarily can realise the value in cash <laughs> <laughs> in your local bank. Right. Well, I, like I, you know, I, so I, w I will say right. So shout out to Col Colburn Bell mm -hmm. who helped us on this project, and Colburn owns the Genesis collection. Mm -hmm. So Colburn will quite, and he's quite great about this. He he was one of the first collectors in the space, and and he says like the stuff that the, the guys collected at the space was just stuff, stuff that they really liked. And they, they were just... NFTs then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, crypto art. So, yeah. like, he, like, he has, you know, crypto punks, stuff yeah, like yeah. this. And, uh, and he, he said, look, we were just kids and we were buying stuff that we liked and we had, we'd done well out of crypto. And so we were buying stuff we liked. Mm -hmm. uh, so it isn't... He says, we, I don't know where it is, but it's, he calls it the Genesis collection. And it's important because it is the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So very much the way the Sean Sexton, Sexton's collections of those early photographs are important. It's, 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 it's a It's it's like less than five years old. I know, I know. <laughs> it I know, happens I know. so fast, yeah, right? Yeah. You know? So can, can we talk, Tim, we talk to, about that? Like, do you, would you see NFTs featuring it in your work again? Like, would you be thinking of when you're creating that this is something that you would use again? Yeah, I actually have. I was shocked at it, that I would. I think it's a completely different way of doing stuff. And it, like, as I say, like 2D, to me, when I look at the 2D stuff, it didn't really, it doesn't really work. I don't know, I'm just me, personally, it didn't, the 2D kind of stuff doesn't work, that this kind of work works well, and it draws your attention. It's like, as we said, Instagram. Put any photograph on Instagram, no matter who it is, it gets lost in the sea of images and it's just gone. And I think these, this kind of way, way of working, even if it is just one single image and we do something to it to make it move, to move movement or something in it that makes it different, that in a way that if you were going to show in a gallery, you would need 30, 40 TV screens, it was never going to happen. So it's a different way of viewing the work. And I do, yeah, I think there has to be, to me personally, to make the NFT, there has to be something different in a different way of showing the work than I would show it in a gallery or yeah. But I definitely, yeah, I'm interested in it. Like, yeah, I think it's amazing, kind of, it's a weird world. Okay, yeah. I'll just put, the, does anyone have any questions? Because we've talked a lot, and I, I think we'd like to hear from anyone in the room. Yep. Yeah. It's a kind of really more than a question, and I think it's about the content of the pieces here. Uh, the, the actual, the message behind the art, and to me, all the pieces are highly political pieces in their own right. And some are quite critical pieces, and some speak to fundamentalism, but yet in someone's home, in a border community, what's going on in the border community that has the impact on the environment? And I'm just wondering, you know, the death of democracy, Brexit, all, all of these big issues, and yet very pertinent issues to, to here, to, to, to the island. And I'm wondering then how the, this new medium for displaying this art and trading this art, you know, is, is, it a, is it a democratizing force? Will it bring these issues that maybe are, will, will, it bring, will, will it bring it 
to a wider audience, or is it still quite niche? I mean, for me, it really feels like it. Again, it is really commodity. Like I definitely like it's. It's been really interesting to to work with a uh, with. Um, a composer with a collaborator and definitely like multimedia is something I'd be interested in. I think there's, there's, there's elements of, so far from my limited knowledge, there's very little that's in, in, intrinsic to the medium of NFTs that for me as an artist I'd be interested in exploring, apart from potentially things like issues around ownership and things like that. But, but, but definitely, I, if, if for me it feels like it's, uh, it's about ownership, so I don't see how it could be about you know, opening the work out. I don't know, what does anyone else think? Well, I can I I mean slightly uh, no okay <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have to take it off. Uh, I think there's a form which is I think we might be mixing up the form of the work which is video mm. with the NFT which is the the ability. So that's where, if I if we go Instagram, like my work, any of the work could be just put on Instagram, and it would meet all what you're saying. You know, do people see it? The internet is full of photography and video and text and sound. So, but this is a way of creating market interest by like locking the ownership of a file, which is a slight, it's not, so does that make sense? Mm. So we have a form and a, and, a, and a value are kind of being put together, which to me, that's the interesting thing. I could make the same work without making an NFT. If NFTs cost a certain amount of money to mint, uh, if, if I make money out of them, I'll make more. Think about it. It's like framing a photograph, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, does, does that does that make sense? So in a way, though, it, 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 is it, it's like you're creating a permanent digital portfolio, in, in some ways. Of yeah, which I you know I could do with my own website and just put the work on it. You know, and we all kind of do that to an extent. I think the but ownership is thing more, is a huge thing. Though. Yeah, I would yeah. always be the first owner. Yeah. on the chain and yeah. that's a huge thing that you know like if you have work on the internet or online or whatever mm. it can, if somebody does anything manipulation they'll put it in photoshop and put it back up the yeah. metadata has changed and it's gone and it's never yours anymore yeah where that is actually locked forever that if i put that up that i will always be the first owner and, and the maker of it and that is a huge thing i think yeah. i think it's a no matter who owns it after me, I will always be the person who yeah. has made it and owned it. Yeah. And, the and then I quite like the fact that uh, with this, you know, Mocha exhibition, uh, we all loan them the work yeah. so that they can show it. Yeah. So just even to be asked permission, you know, in that way, it needs my consent. So it's sort of locking the file as being mine, uh, which I, I, I think that's a good, it's good. Can, do you mind if I ask another question? No, then? please. And it, this one is for Una. So I think when we see uh, what happened in the music industry, um, so, I mean, let's pick jazz, right? Because <laughs> so, hip-hop is sort of built on borrowing and collaboration and repurposing and things like that. So we're not really talking about NFTs being a vehicle for repurpose. That, that isn't really something that's emerging mm -hmm. at the moment. But... Instagram, you could say, or memes, memes, mm. the ultimate repurposable thing, right, or political commentary, or anything else. But in the music industry, what we've seen is this moment of recording, and there's mechanical copyright, and there's royalties, and there's different fractionalization process of ownership. And then for the audience, what you do, you go, well, you used to go into the record store, but now you probably get it online. <laughs> and that whole industry has completely changed a record or an album or a single is a commodity. You can't get it without it being a commodity. Even on Spotify, like you're paying to hear a piece. Yeah. And you can't even mess around. Like you can't like play it backwards or forwards or, you know, you can only hear it the way it was designed. Mm. For the most part, without like really tinkering. Mm. So you were involved in this project. Did you get any of that kind of mark? can we say market resonance 
or did you did you completely engage with the process as the creative process? Did you? Did what do you mean by market resonance? So like the the in the music industry or when you're making music yeah. for recording purposes, right? And, and which you maybe you've done that as well as your composition sure. or performance work, right? So did you see this process as different or similar to that, that like the recording process? Okay, uh, it's it's uh, that's very it is interesting. Um, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, to be perfectly honest. Um, but you're you're so right. Like the the music industry in terms of the in terms of ownership, in terms of how you as a creator, how you create music, how you put it out in the world, has changed. Has been. There does tend to be a fair bit of exploitation around it. Um, it's finding ways to earn from your work it can be, it's challenging. I think it's challenging for many art forms. Um, one particular streaming service, beginning with the letter S, <laughs> um, is wonderful if you're a listener. It's not great if you're an actual composer or a musician, unless you have huge traction. So that can be challenging. It's, it's very challenging for a lot of musicians, especially throughout lockdown. Um, you can't perform, you can't earn from touring. But coming back to what you're saying, in terms of seeing it as a as a way to to kind of to create work or to, to get involved in collaboration, I, I am interested. Um, I'm interested because of the work I did with Ruth. Also Nina and I are interested, another one of the artists. I'm also interested in doing I work with film too, and I, I love the fact that I can create something audiovisual wise yeah. and that you have control of, a, of what Kirill was saying, the point of creation. I think there is an element of the novelty of it that is also very exciting. And while I would be, like Paul was saying, I, I'm pretty grounded, I like to take my time to figure out what, what's what. And, it was a little bit of like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what is it, greedy? Um, and I'm still figuring that out. But I do think that there are a number of there are a number of aspects that really impress me, and one of them is the fact that, like Michael was saying, the ownership and all of this kind of that's important. It's a it's putting value in your work. There is something about the novelty of it and the fact that value is being placed on the work that I really like. And um, in the way that Bandcamp is for musicians, where you would always try and encourage people to go to Bandcamp to buy your vinyl or your CD, if you value your work, I think NFTs have something very, very, there's a similar, yeah, there's this, there is a similar, um, there is a comparison, yeah, like a valorization the, 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 aspect. The one thing, I'm just going to put it out there, does anyone have any questions? Uh, any other questions in the room? I've, I've got hundreds of questions. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 uh, maybe something that's all for lovely. The idea of um, images on the web and things that go viral, things that are successful, things that, you know, I mean, one of the most successful videos on the web is, you know, Charlie bites his own finger or a cat jumping into a box. Do you not think that art could sort of become diluted in a way by this? All of these things do command value, but it's a value that I don't really understand. You know, I mean, I, the more hits something gets, the more money it becomes, and it becomes incredibly successful. You said pictures are, it doesn't matter if they're pixelated, or if they become viral, the art is successful and the money goes up and up, you know, and it becomes, the value is, is there suddenly. Okay, so I don't know if it's, if it becomes a very diluted forum, if you're, great art competing against a, a cat jumping in a box. You know, I think that the image of the baby biting its own finger could sell in the copyright of this, it could go for millions. So um, I've got an idea. Yeah, can I just say something? I mean, I don't really want to give you. But I would sort of feel, I, I agree with you, right, wholeheartedly, but on a sort of hopeful front, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that actually, that's what time does. Time sorts out the good from the bad. And uh, things are a meme, you know, they may be good memes, they may be bad memes, 
the things that stick in your mind 10 years later, they're the things that culture sorts out over time. Yeah. And it only does it over time. It's like, you know the way a movie, we all watch lots of movies, I would watch a certain amount, and sometimes two weeks later, I'm thinking about something that I didn't think was that good at the time. And it starts to become something that plays on my mind and I take it more seriously and then eventually it's one of my favourites. And I think like that's how, I think that's kind of the cultural model I like to think. And actually some of those gifts, memes, they oh, yeah. are fantastic. They will, they will come to I be mean, seen are. as Political fantastic. Some of them. And like Paul's overlooked photos, not yours but your collectors, it's the same thing. Time sorts out. The, the effect of the thing on people over time sorts out for us. That's a bit of hope there. I mean, for, for me, the, the kind of the, one of the more interesting things about just the NFT space is the fact that it is sort of shaking up sort of the... There are the traditional gatekeepers in the art world. There's, mm -hmm. you know, institutions and curators and magazine publishers and stuff like this, and it does, it's shifting things, um, you know. To, that creative disruption is always useful, because there's always an incumbent in the space. Now, I would have to say that curators are some, some of the poorest paid professionals in the world, so... Oh, here we go. They don't need to be <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, but the, one, the one thing I, I find really interesting about it, and, I, and it's something that we talk, talk, talk about in the gallery often, because we, we uh, artists often are quite, they, they have ideas, so it's, it's a way of thingifying ideas. So when people, when, when you start curating a show, and this is when, when we started this conversation, is you, you've got these stories that you've been telling in your work or studying or pursuing for, for two years, and, a, and an exhibition is an opportunity to thingify that, to literally draw a line and say, what is the work today? And, you can, and I suppose that to me is interesting about about this within a digital and concept. Just, just interject, like, this, this particular part started in, in a much simpler form and it was, you know, during <coughs> COVID and it was working with our partners in the Nair Centre in Derry and the RCC in Lake County and was looking at what are the difficulties for artists and one of the things that came out of some of the strategic planning sessions was and talking to artists and consulting with artists through a process that Paul devised and one of the things this opportunity for random creative interactions and for artists to collaborate. So the start of this project was, was, was focused initially on cross-border collaboration to find ways for artists to create conversations that would be meaningful and exploratory and risky, the word risk, you know, but to pay artists and support artists in doing that seemed really important. And we had no idea it was going to go down the NFT route, but so much of like what we do is ephemeral. So this thingifying and adding value, but not a commercial value, but valuing the work. Yeah. It's just a, a really interesting yeah. 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 What we would love in gallery photography are to thank the artist, because it's been a really brave thing to undertake, yeah. you know, yeah, and yeah, actually. it is incredible. <laughs> I'd probably have explained it quite badly. We're coming up to our time now. You've been so patient with us. <laughs> can, I just, <laughs> you really well, have. can I just say thank you as an artist to Gallery Photography and RCC and to Paul and to Jeremy for, because I actually, I think, like, I mean, what we've just spoken about, Trish, there in terms of the kind of collaboration side of it, is actually really kind of critical, because at the beginning, I actually didn't know how to engage with the NFT thing, so actually what I engaged with was the collaboration aspect of it and the, you know that opportunity to kind of relook at the work so I think I mean I think the NFT is another kind of really rich layer I think it's really contemporary really kind of, kind of off its time so it's been I think really one of the most innovative artistic development projects in Ireland <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I'm, I'm, I, I've been on the board for the gallery photography for six years now, and I'm stepping down in January, and I've had such fun, and I've learned tons. Did we, did we call some? <laughs> 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 no, uh, legally, I have to step down. Uh, for, for the probity of the organisation, and, and, and so.
So Sorry. Can I just say something? That I think what the composer's done was amazing. Yeah. I, honestly, to, to, to try and get into our heads and work out what we're trying to do and stuff, it, the stuff, it ended up being, honestly, I was blown away by everybody's piece and the music and what the music did for the pieces. And yeah, I can't, like, they're just amazing. Like, it's good. Yeah, We'd say yeah very good. Like, I agree that. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, to, to try and understand what we're going, like, what's in our heads half the time. <laughs> and understand that and do what you did it's, all, it's amazing so I think we'll finish there thank you all again for coming and thanks again to our funders um, this event is part of um, the launch season for a year long uh, programme which is celebrating and exploring the history of photography in Ireland so this is very much at the cutting edge and the exploratory end of things but over in the Prince Works in Dublin Castle we've got um, a survey exhibition which has been presented and organised in partnership with leading um, archives and museums across the island of Ireland. So that's um, on until the 6th of February in the Print Works, so if you get a chance, have a look at that. And then we're starting a new initiative here that kind of comes off some of the conversations we've been having with artists over a sustained period of time, and we're launching a collection archiving initiative, because some of the same issues that have arisen around the thingification and you know we've been we've been aware that for years artists have had scans or negatives that they now need a professional record of. So we want to work with artists to to lay down portfolio sets with them that will preserve a, a pro level, a thingification, uh, a small record of their archive, and also work with artists to teach them and train them into how to look after their paper material, how to look after their digital files, and how to leave a trace for future de generations that records the diversity and the excellence of contemporary photography in Ireland. So we'll be, we'll be launching that exhibition over the coming weeks. So thank you again for coming. All right, you'll be very patient with us again. Thank you very much.